वन जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी गोपी जान बल्ला किरी बरधारी गोपी चन बल्ला किरी बरधारी यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन तेरा वन चारी यमुन तेरा वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 
राम राम हरि हरि नेत्यागोर हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो नेत्यागोर हरि भो जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय शिल प्रभु पाद जय ओम विष्णु पाद परमहंस परिब्रज का चार्य अष्टतर सत श्री श्रीम His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Iskand Samstapaka Acharya, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnupad, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Ananta Koti Vaishnavindi Ki, Nam Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki, Primshika Horshi Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindaki, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina, Shampun Radhakun Giri Govardhan Ki, Vrindavan Dham Ki, Mayapur Dham Ki, Ganga Mai Ki, Yamuna Mai Ki, Tosi Maharani Ki, Bhakti Devi Ki, Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan Ki, Sri Gopasta Nivrat Ki, All Glories to Assembled Devotees, All Glories to Assembled Devotees, All Glories to the Assembled Devotees, All Glories to Sri Guru, Sri Gauranga, All Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Virata Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishai Shashanyavadi Paschachate Shatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Itti Dham Ripa Gangaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Toto Jaya Mudiraya Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki So today being a Gopastami, we'd like to speak something about the significance of this event. So this Gopastami, this is the, the eighth day in the bright fortnight of the auspicious month of Kartik. And it's described in Padma Purana. In Padma Purana there's a section called Kartik Mahatmya. And it's mentioned there. And it's also mentioned in Srimad Bhagavat in 10th Canto, chapter number 15. Chapter 15 is yes, so the killing of Dhanuka Sura. And the, the chapter begins, the very first verse describes how 
He was given Sarasri charge of taking care of the cows. That's Lord Vailesh Krishna Hinjiva. along with Lord Balaram. So it was a significant Balabdi, event. Previously, Lord Krishna had been going with the cows. But then it was decided that now he has grown up enough he is sufficiently strong and mature that we will give him charge of the cows. Nanda Maharaj and some of the other cowherd men could then retire. The older men retire, the young men come up. Right? That's the system. Prabhupada said in old age, you can we old men can sit down in the holy dharm and study the books of the Goswamis. And the young men, they should go out and preach. That's uh, the program. So similarly in Lord Krishna's time, as a young child, Lord Krishna was enacting his childhood leela. He was imitating. Lord Krishna is always the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He always is full of all opulences. He's the Bhagavan. And it's not that he has to grow old to become strong. <laughs> we know he had already killed Putana and Trinavarta and these people. So it's not that Lord Krishna had to grow up, but he was playing he was imitating this for the pleasure of his devotees. And indeed Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, they didn't like Lord Krishna to go out to the forest every day. They wanted to keep Krishna with them. They wanted to keep him at home. Just like in Chaitanya Leela, uh, at one point, Chaitanya's mother and Lord Chaitanya's mother and father, such Mata Jagannath Mishra, de decided we won't send our son to school anymore. We'll keep him at home. Because if he goes to school, he may learn about the miseries of the material world. And he may follow the path of his older brother. Because Vishwarup had already left home and gone off to take sannyas. He, his parents were planning to get him married, and so he just left home. And he went away and renounced everything. And they were worried that the same would happen to Nimai. So they thought, we won't send him to school anymore. So then they found Lord Chaitanya eating dirt one day. And he was sitting with the dirty pots. Mother said, she said, what are you doing? Why are you sitting there? This is all contaminated. Why are you sitting with these with his dirty pots? He said, well, you don't let me go to school. How do I know? How do I know what's pure and what's not? You're not allowing me to get any education. And all the other neighbors, they also petitioned Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata that you should send your child to school. Whatever is the destiny for your son, that will happen. You cannot change the destiny just by keeping it home. So let him go to school. So the same way, Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, the times of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they wanted to, to, to keep Krishna and Balaram at home with them. They didn't want them to go off to the forest. But then they thought, well, they're growing up. And Lord Krishna was also eager to have more rasa. Because the rasa at home with the mother and father is very limited. But when he goes off to the forest, 
he could go to the forest with so many of his friends, the cowherd boys. And we hear of all the different activities which Krishna performed with all the cowherd boys when they would go to the forest. They'd play so many games. They'd play hide and seek and they'd have wrestling, right? When Krishna came to Mathura, Chanura and Mustika, they said, we know you're expert in wrestling. We've heard about you wrestling in, in the forest of Vrindavan. Chanura and Mustika were huge, physically massive persons, and Krishna and Balaram are little children. Uh, how, how old Krishna was at that time, Mathura? Krishna, the wrestling arena? Uh, about uh, 11 when Krishna came to Mathura. So, they were very small compared to Chanura and Mustika. And their limbs appeared soft. But Chanura and Mustika said, No, we know you're a great wrestler. We want to challenge. We want to see your skill in wrestling. Krishna and Balaram would wrestle with the other cowherd boys in the forest. They would play games with each other. They Sometimes they would play football. They didn't have a ball, but they had bale fruit, and they'd kick the bale fruit around. And in this way, they would enjoy so many pastimes in the forests of Vrindavan, imitating the different animals and the sounds of the different creatures, and all the, they, they give pleasure to each other. In this way, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram were enjoying their childhood leela with all their friends, the cowherd boys. And of course, all these cowherd boys are not ordinary souls. But, Srimad Bhagavatam said, Krita Punya Punja. They perform many pious activities over many lifetimes. And therefore, they're able to enjoy these childhood leelas in the company of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram who are the Supreme Personalities of Godhead. So Lord Krishna was given charge first with the calves, and that went on, I think it describes three years and eight months he was taking care of the calves, when he was three years and eight months. But when he reached the Poganda stage, he was given charge of the cows. Poganda means from the age of six up to the age of ten, end of nine, ten. So from the age of six right through to the end of, the end of his ninth year, when he became, he's Poganda. Previously, it's Kumar, right? And as he becomes older, he, there's more Rasa available. Krishna can display more rasa, rasikic pastimes. So Lord Krishna was taking care of the cows in the forest of Vrindavan. And it's described, the first verse of the 15th chapter, that the land of Vrindavan became more beautiful. Why? Because as Lord Krishna walked through the forest of Vrindavan, his footprints were there throughout the forest of Vrindavan. Previously, as a small child, you know, in Bala Lila, a small child, his feet, his lotus feet are very small. So the markings on his feet were not very clear or very significant. They were very faint. But as he grew up, as he came into the Poganda stage, then his feet grew a bit and the markings on his lotus feet became very clear. And they could see, you could see the auspicious markings. Actually, it's described there are 19 auspicious markings on the lotus feet of Krishna. There's 11 markings on the right foot and eight markings on the left foot. So, 
Krishna and Balaram were wandering all over the forests of Vrindavan and they were making the for forest of Vrindavan more beautiful by the markings of their lotus feet. Markings like thunderbolt and the gold for controlling the elephant and fish. These are some of the different auspicious markings on the lotus feet of Krishna. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur describes for us the significance of all of these different markings. For example, thunderbolt is there to, dis to show that there's a mountain of sin in our hearts and that mountain of sin can be destroyed by the thunderbolt. It can smash the mountain of ignorance and sin which is there in our hearts. And the goad for controlling the elephant is, it shows controlling our mind because our mind is like the stubborn elephant and you have to have that goad to control the mind. A fish is an interesting symbol on the lotus feet of Krishna and it represents, this is actually the symbol of Cupid. Cupid has this, a fish on his flag. Different personalities will drive chariots and they each have their own markings. We know in the Bhagavad Gita, who's on the flag of Arjuna? Hanuman, right. And Arjuna is praying to Hanuman that as you fought for Lord Ram, let me fight for Lord Krishna. So each of these great personalities, they have their own unique symbol on their flag. So it's described that the symbol on the flag of Cupid is a fish. And of course we know Cupid is the god of love, or amorous affairs. And this shows that Lord Krishna has conquered Cupid because the fish is on his lotus feet. And so there are many other different symbols all there marking the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna uh, made the forest of Vrindavan more beautiful by Walk, leaving his lotus footprints throughout the forest, throughout the twelve forests of Vrindavan. Another special pastime which took place on this auspicious day, it is described by the devotees that on this particular day, Lord Krishna was feeling great separation from his eternal consort, Srimati Radharani. And because of the restrictions which were placed on Srimati Radharani, it was not possible for Lord Krishna to meet her. And he was feeling very sorry and very hopeless in separation from his pleasure potency. So Subhao is a very dear friend of Lord Krishna and one of the cowherd boys. Subhao found out from Krishna what was the problem. So Subhao told to Lord Krishna, don't worry, I will arrange. I will, somehow I will arrange, I will go to Radharani's house and I will get her free from the house so that she can come and be with you. So Subhao went off to the home of Srimati Radharani and he was in, he met with Jatila. Jatila is the mother-in-law, Abhimanu's mother, mother-in-law of Radharani, Jatila. And she saw Subhao and said, what are you doing here? Why you've come here? He said, Oh, I'm looking for one of our calves. One of my calves that I saw wandering into your yard here. It must be somewhere in here. I'm going to look for it. She said, well, go quickly. Go and get it and go. Yes, mother, I will. 
So Subal went into the house, got into the yard there, and with the help of other gopis who were there, he found out where Srimati Radharani was. And she was in a room in private. So Subal went there into the room and he met with Srimati Radharani and he told her the condition of her Shamsundar. That Shamsundar's heart is breaking in separation from you. He wants so much to be with you. But Srimati Radharani said, how is it possible? Jutila will never let me go out. She'll never let me go out of here on my own. She knows I'm just going to be with Krishna. She won't let me go. So Subhau has an idea. He said, look, you and I, we're the same complexion. And we look a bit alike. We're the same height. You know, he said, let me give you my clothes and I'll take your clothes. I will stay here and you can go to be with Lord Krishna. So that is what happened. They changed their dress. Subal put on Radharani's gopi dress. Come with the head. You know? And look like, just like Srimati Radharani. And Radharani puts on a turban and puts on Subhau's dhoti and the kurta and everything. And then, because she's a young woman, so she's got a chest, so she picked up a calf and held the calf in front of her chest and Mother Jatila didn't notice that this is a, a woman. She thought this is Subhau. I got my calf, I'm going now, Mother. Thank you. you know? <laughs> and she walked off. Srimati Radharani was able to get out of the home. And Subhau stayed there in Srimati Radharani's room. So Jatila is thinking, Radharani's there. No, everything's okay. And Srimati Radharani was able to go off and to be with Lord Krishna and to enjoy their conjugal pastimes together. And they could go to Radha Kund and visit the different groves around Radha Kund and enjoy with all the other different gopis there. So in this way, Lord Krishna's feeling was greatly relieved. Actually, initially, when Srimati Radharani came there to Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna saw Subhau, he thought it was Subhau coming because she was just, just like Subhau. So Lord Krishna said, what happened? And Srimati Radharani played a trick on Krishna. She said, oh, I couldn't do it. No, <laughs> I couldn't succeed. And so Krishna, she said this just to increase Krishna's longing for her. Because when Krishna heard, oh, Subhau's not been successful, oh. So he felt more pain in the heart. So Radharani came up to Krishna and embraced him. And as soon as she embraced him, then Lord Krishna immediately knew. This is not Subhau. <laughs> this is Radha. And so they were so happy to be together. So some temples, I don't know if we will do it here, but some temples they actually dress Radharani as Subhau in commemorance of this auspicious pastime. They will dress Radharani like a cowherd boy. And they'll put a turban on her and everything and just to remember this auspicious event which took place on this day go past to me so this day go past to me is very special for us because it reminds us of the importance of the cows in our vedic society and 
we should also remember how much neglected the cows are today in this Kali Yuga society. So we're trying to show an example to the world about the importance of cow protection. Right? Krishi go raksha vaninam vaisha karma svabhava jam that the duty of the Vaishya is farming, cow protection and trade. So, Krishi Goraksha Vaninam. We have to learn, we have to understand the importance of cow protection. It's very, very much lacking in our modern society. We have become so much neglectful and cruel of the importance of cows in our culture. So taking care of the cows, Srila Prabhupada, I remember Srila Prabhupada just a short time before he left the world. He was re reflecting and he was talking about his going to USA and he said, you know, America was very nice. He said, they gave me all facility. I could preach there. There are different parts of the world. You don't get the same kind of freedom for preaching. So many restrictions. But because in USA, they have the First Amendment, which is freedom of religion. So therefore, Prabhupada was able to go to USA and to successfully establish the Krishna Consciousness Movement. He said, they were very nice. They, they gave us so much opportunity to establish Krishna Consciousness. For many years, we were able to distribute literatures everywhere. You know, for many years, even in airports and places like this, devotees were distributing huge quantities of books to everyone and everywhere. But Prabhupada said just only one thing. He said, there's just only one thing about America. He said, if only they would learn to take care of the cows. That they're so, they're so uncultured, they don't know about cow protection. Actually, you go to America, you can see sometimes they have fields of cows, but they're all beef cows. Means they're not dairy cows, they're not milking cows, they're simply beef cows. They're raised for slaughter. So this is a condition in many countries in the world today. That they kill so many cows. And the cows are our mother. They provide us with the most vital of all foodstuff in the form of milk. Milk is the most important food for the health of a child. Every child has to be given milk. Usually, of course, they feed the mother's milk, but then as they grow, then they're given the milk from the cow. It's very important. Prabhupada explains, just by drinking milk, then, he said, just by drinking milk you can develop, you get pious activities. Nowadays, of course, they have these people called vegans, and they preach the opposite. They say it's sinful to drink milk. Yeah, and we agree, with, some of their arguments are true, that the cows are so badly treated that if they're ta they just, if we just take their milk and force out every last bit of milk from them, and then when they don't give any milk, then they're sent for slaughter, then that is cruel, that is barbaric, that is the worst thing. So there are many devotees who won't take that kind of milk. They will only take ahimsa milk, meaning milk which is coming from cows which are protected, by the devotees. And that's very special milk. You get the cows which are properly cared for and given love, then they provide milk and they give a lot of milk. 
His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj describes before he was a sannyasi, he used to be serving in the New Vrindavan community. And New Vrindavan had many cows who would give a lot of milk. But he said there was an interesting pastime. There are many pastimes, of course, with cows. There was one particular pastime. There was one cow who could give a lot of milk, but she would always kick. You know, anybody who, if you try milking cows, you know, so you, you have to be careful, you don't get a kick, yeah. You know, they've got <laughs> a kick from a cow, it's no joke. So, they, he decided, we'll tie both legs. They tied both legs. And then he sat down to milk the cow, and the trow, cow tried to kick him with both legs, <laughs> and fell over. And fell on top of him. And he said he had to be pulled out. And he said when he came out from underneath the cow, the cow looked at him and said, don't you ever try that again. <laughs> so, you know, cows are very intelligent creatures. You know, people say animals have no intelligence. It is not a bit true. They're very intelligent creatures. Of course, they don't know about God consciousness, but when it comes to eating and sleeping and mating and defending, they can be very intelligent. And so we see this with the cows, how much intelligence they have. And when they're properly cared for, when they're given love, then they're happy to give their milk. And we read in the Srimad Bhagavatam how in the times of Maharaj Parikshit, when cows were protected, that the fields were wet with milk, that the milk was coming freely from their udders. Not that you have to have some machine to force out the milk from the cow, as it's done today. People they treat the cows like some factory, like some mechanized system. They have no real appreciation or love for the cow. But the cow is our mother and she provides this food which is so vital for the well-being of human society. Just by drinking milk, we develop a good brain to understand Krishna consciousness. It's very important. And therefore, you see also many temples, they will keep cows also. Many of our ISKCON temples also, they have their cows. And at least they should get enough milk for the deities. The real purpose is to provide milk for the deity. And then the devotees, they get the prasada. So we do want to emphasize this in our Krishna, in our Krishna consciousness movement. The importance of cows, caring for cows. This planet actually belongs to the cow. The deity of the earth planet is Mother Bhumi. She is the goddess of the earth planet and she is in the form of a cow. And we read Lord Krishna at the time of his birth Nanda Maharaj gave two million cows in charity to Brahmanas at the birth of Lord Krishna. Vasudev was in prison at the time when Krishna was appeared as the child of Vasudev and Devaki. But Vasudev also gave nine lakh cows in charity in his mind. And then when he got released from prison, as soon as he got out of prison and Kamsa had been killed, he got his cows back and he immediately gave all those cows in charity. 
because previously he could only do it in his mind because he was in the prison. But as soon as he was freed from Kamsa's jail, he immediately gave his cows in charity. Of course, giving cows in charity is something which has to be done with caution. You don't give cows in charity to an unqualified person. People have to be qualified to take care of cows. And one of the big problems which we often find in taking care of cows is just having enough land for the cows. Because cows ne need land to graze. That's why Krishna is going to the forest in Vrindavan every day. He's taking the cows. Or as a young boy, he took the calves. As he grew up, he took the cows. And in the forests of Vrindavan, there's so many lush green grasses for the cows to graze with. And also, cows need a lot of water. And when Kaliya came in the Yamuna, then Lord Krishna had to do something about that. Because Kaliya came in the Yamuna and she's poisoning all the water of the Yamuna. So, so many cows and cowherd boys were killed. Lord Krishna, of course, could bring them back to life. And Lord Krishna punished Kalila, Kaliya and he told him, get out from here. You don't come here. You go far away from here. This water of the Yamuna is meant for the people of Vrindavan and the cows of Vrindavan. So cows need a lot of water and they need also nice grass. Today being Gopastami, I hope you will all go to the Goshala. Right? We're all supposed to go to the Goshala today. And we should try to do some seva for the cows. Either you can brush the cows or you can feed some grass or something to the cows. We should try to do some go seva. Go seva is very, very powerful. You know, there are some prisons where they have very violent prisoners, very nasty people who have performed acts of great violence and who have been put into prison. And when they're given the job of taking care of cows, because they're taking care of the cows and they're associating with the cows, they're cleaning the cow barn and they're brushing the cows and so on like that, that gradually these violent people, they change and they become gentle. Just by association. Everything comes by association. You associate with the cows, you can also develop the mode of goodness. Lord Krishna himself teaches us. He is known as Govinda, one who gives pleasure to the cows. Gopala, one who protects the cows. Lord Krishna loves to be with the cows. And the cows love Lord Krishna. Wherever Krishna would go, the cows wanted to be with him. They would always surround Krishna. And he would enjoy their company. We have to learn from the example of Lord Krishna. Taking care of the cows. Such an important part of our community. Nowadays, if you were to tell somebody, you know, if they ask you, what are you doing? What job are you doing? I'm taking care of the cows. They'll say, oh. No. They won't feel very impressed, you know. But if you tell them, oh, I'm working in uh, this factory, I'm working in this multinational company, they say, oh, oh, very good. Uh, but if you say, I'm working with the cows, they say, oh. <laughs> they don't have the proper mood. They don't appreciate the importance of the cows in society. 
we are trying to educate people about these things. It is not an easy task, right? We know. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also talks about demigod worship. People who worship demigods, aupamedasaha. Very small brain. Prabhupada said, brain is like stool. Because they're worshipping the demigods to get things which are antavattu phalam tesham, limited and temporary. The same way people are neglecting the importance of cow protection and instead they're simply thinking about their own sense gratification, material opulence, how to improve their eating and sleeping. They do not know the value of natural food and the most important of all foodstuffs is milk. There's a miracle in milk, but it is not known. You get people who say, oh milk, no, no, just give me Coca-Cola. Yeah. This is this is the ignorance of the modern society. They cannot drink milk, but they can drink coffee, tea, Coca-Cola. They want all these things. Who wants milk? Oh, people don't know how important the milk is, how valuable a thing it is. So we're trying to educate people about this. And we have to show them by our own example, taking care of the cows, caring for the cows, keeping them clean and healthy. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it's described during the time of Lord Krishna, how Nanda Maharaj, how all the coward people in Vrindavan, they were very opulent. They were not poor, they were very opulent. They lived a very nice life. Where was their wealth? It was simply based on cows. That they had many cows and the cows produced a lot of milk and from the milk you can make so many other things. Yogurt and cheese and ghee and so many other different preparations are made from milk. These things are very valuable. We are seeing now also that some, some of in our temples, like in Vrindavan and Mayapur at least, I see they sell different things made from the products from the cows, from cow urine, you get medicine, and you, get also, you can make also toothpaste and body soaps. Many different things can be manufactured from the product, just from the, the waste from the cow. What we think is waste is actually value. We think gold is very valuable. But in the times of Nanda Maharaj, gober was valuable. <laughs> if you had a big mountain of cow dung at your home, oh, he's a very rich man. <laughs> Got so much cow dung there. That is wealth. We think, oh, cow dung. <laughs> People, they want, we want everything, chemicals, all chemicals, even the milk is chemicals, homogenized, pasteurized, not natural. You get things in cartons, it's not natural, it's not the real thing. They call it yogurt, it's nothing like real yogurt. We don't know, we've... We, We've fallen into this, this conditioning. We're thinking everything, you get everything in the supermarket, right? Do you get fresh milk in the supermarket? Do you get paneer there? Do you get fresh yogurt? Everything is just chemicals, adulterated, polluted. And we are so accustomed to these things. We're thinking this is it, this is what we want. We have to be more awake and alert to think about what is the real thing. 
This is actually given to us by the gift of Lord Krishna. Therefore, Lord Krishna, therefore it is said in the scriptures, Namo Brahmana Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitayacha, that the cows and the brahmanas are very dear to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna spent his first 11 years taking care of the cows when he was in Vrindavan. And he was always loving, thinking about these cows and remembering his wonderful association with them, taking them to Govardhan and let them play on the hills of Govardhan and drink the water there and eat the grasses there. So we want to understand more the importance of cow protection. Going around Mayapur these days, there's some cows, but there's an awful lot of buffalo. People are more fond of buffalo. Buffalo milk is not quite the same as cow milk. Buffalo milk means buffalo brain. <laughs> A little different from the cow. Somebody even suggested to Prabhupada, goat milk. Prabhupada said, goat milk? <laughs> Prabhupada was not interested in goat milk at all. I was talking to one, one man from Africa, he said, camel milk. <laughs> well, the, the, the real thing is cow milk, right? Mother cow. But cows and bulls are also important. We have to take care of the bulls. Just like you want to have milk, you have to have calves. The cows need to have calves to give milk. And then you don't always get cows. You get bulls also. And we have to make use of the bull. So it's important for us to have a balance. Not that we just only think of cows for milk. But we need to also have, take care of the bulls and see that they're properly engaged. And the bull is meant for plowing the fields and agricultural work. So they have to be given some work. We are so dependent. We've got our, uh, what is the, Pajero and these cars and this car. We need more bullet carts, right? Let's... Of course, a bit slower, <laughs> but still, the, the cow, the bull, bulls also have to be used. They have to be, they, they're very valuable creatures. We're so dependent, tractors everywhere, using tractors. How long can you go on using tractors? Someday, the petrol supply is going to run out. And when the petrol supply supply runs out, then what are you going to do? It's going to happen. Prabhupada warned us, this modern society is doomed to failure, depending on petrol, motor cars, airplanes. How long is it going to last? It's, it's almost finished. We're seeing now with the pandemic situation, so many things have shut down, so many things have changed. There's a need for us to show the Vedic culture, the importance of the cow and the use of the bulls, using the bulls to plow the fields. And bulls also can be used for transport. When Nanda Maharaj went to Mathura, they took the bullock carts. They didn't use their yoga powers. They took the bullet carts to go there and see Lord Krishna. So we want to understand more this Vedic culture and think we want to use it. We are promoting the Vedic culture. But at the same time, we're also quite materialistic ourselves. We ride around, you know, we have our iPhone and we have our computers and everything like that. How long is that going to last? We don't know. We cannot depend on it. We have a brain. 
use the brain. Just like in the past, there were no calculators. People could do calculation in their brain. Very quickly, they could multiply numbers together and they could add figures up and they could remember so many things. Nowadays, everything is not in the brain, it's in the hard drive. Right? We're the slave of the computer. Every, our memory stops. We just use the hard drive. Everything is there. This is a defect. So the same way, we don't want to use the cow and the bull. We like to do everything lazy way, fast way. But what is actually the proper way? What is actually pleasing to Lord Krishna? Is that we should take care of the cow and the bull? We should keep them happy, keeping them happy, nice and clean, decorated. We can read in the Krishna book, Maharaj Niga giving charity, he was giving many cows and all the cows were decorated. They were decorated in silk cloth and they had gold on their hoofs and their horns also were golden plated. And they had necklaces of pearls around their necks as well. Society was not poor. We are poor. Everything is plastic, fiberglass, manufactured. But in the time of Lord Krishna, everything was pure and natural. So we want to appreciate these things more and more. We want to give our respect today. We want to go and worship the cows. We worship the cows. Lord Krishna worshiped the cows, especially today, Gopastami and Govardhan Puja. We also want to follow that example. Yes, we worship the cow. Not that the cow is God, but the cow is God. The servant of the Supreme Lord, and she provides for the society the most wonderful foodstuff in the form of milk. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki.